ಮೂರ್ತಿ ವಿನೋದಕಾರಿ ಪಲಪನ ವಿಸರೆ ನೈ ಜೋ ವಿಸಾರಿ ಜುಗಲ ಚರಣ ಸೋಲ ಚಿನ್ನ ಜೇಹ ನಜರ ಸಮೀಪೆ ರಹೋ ಅಮಾರಿಯೇಹ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಾರಾಜ್ ನಿ ಜಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ನಿ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಓ ಮೈರಿ ಅರ್ ಬಲೋಯ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪಾದ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಋಷಿ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಭಗತ್ ಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಡಿವೋರ್ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಖಂಡಕಿ ಜಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಜಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಐ ಡ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ವರ್ ಟು ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಯು ಫಾರ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಗ್ರ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಯು ವಿಶ್ ವಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಯು ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಫಾರ್ If you were to say anything you want ask me what would you ask for anything anything in the world anything you want anything what would you ask for quickly just god sure is but in chamar nowadays you know kids ask for a million dollars or a billion dollars or to win to win the lottery or a 7 series BMW or a Lexus RX 430 fully loaded black tinted windows or a mansion to live in or even nice clothing any of these things some who go to mandir would even ask for attending kalyan or ultimate liberation right some kids would but all these things bhagwan can give even atyantik kalyan meaning ultimate liberation what do i mean by liberation i'm talking about where one is freed from this cycle of life and death and one soul goes to akshardham that even bhagwan can grant but my question to you is now what there is one thing that bhagwan cannot give to his devotees what is that one thing he cannot grant he can grant everything he can grant 1 billion dollars to you and you would get 1 billion dollars he can give you a car he can give you everything but there is one thing that he cannot give what is that one thing Bhagwan can give everything. He's all powerful, all mighty. Everything, all knowing. But there's one thing he can't give to us. What is that one thing? It's a difficult question. I bet you don't know who's watching. So, since we have limited time, I'm just going to give you the answer. It's called bhakti or devotion. Bhagwan cannot give this to his devotees there's a kirtan by nan santo prabhu mune bhakti dana moye dije meaning give your devotion to me as a donation dan meaning donation please give your devo- do, uh, devotion to me as a donation that's how difficult it is to obtain bhakti and taking an example suppose we perform some kind of crime and we have to go to jail we go to jail and we have to be there for one month now tell me the difference between if you know daily you get one phone call in jail to call your relatives to say hello hi one call that's the that's the law versus you calling your devotees versus you actually becoming freed from jail and meeting your devotees personally isn't there a big difference big difference right calling versus meeting them in person in the same exact way liberation can be granted like this in the vachramrut gurda middle chapter 59th vachramrut bhagwan says that god only god and his saint can grant liberation that's how easy it is but 
He didn't say anything about bhakti. Just like that, in the time of Sri Ji Maharaj, Nan Santo, they had this kind of bhakti. But more than that, I'm reminded of female devotees, such as Jiuba and Laruba, who had tremendous amount of bhakti that we cannot even pertain or we cannot even calculate or it's very difficult to receive. So to try to at least get even 1% of this bhakti, we must, we must look into their life. We must take a look inside of their life. We must see how they performed bhakti in order to at least see what they did. So, I want to take a look into the life of Jiuba and Laruba. So, Jiuba and Laruba were the daughters of Abel Kachar and the other Kachar's elder sisters. Now, they lived in Gadara as well with the other Kachar, but they had tremendous amount of devotion towards Sriji Maharaj. And there's a couple incidents I want to tell you I want to share with you that just by taking a glimpse into their life, we can really understand that this is a true mode of bhakti. Something that is that Bhagwan cannot give, but we can maybe mirror a little bit by taking a look into their life. So at one time, Ibal Kachar was walking by Jivuba's room, Jivuba and Naruba's room, and he just took a glimpse into the room and he saw both Jiuba and Laruba were small at that time. They were performing some kind of milk to this Takorji idol, this idol of God, very devoutly, very perfused in that idol. And Abel Khatri got upset. He said, he thought first in his mind that my daughters are this young, yet they're wasting their time. They should be doing something more with their life. This is for elder people. This is this stuff, these kinds of activities are not for young kids like this. So Ebo Katra entered the room immediately upset at them. And he told them, why are you wasting your time like this? There is no reason that you should be doing this. You should be focusing on other things. You should have higher goals than this. And Laruba and Juba politely said, that we are performing the devotion of Maharaj, the Almighty Supreme Lord who is manifest in this idol. How can you say we are wasting our time? Ibn Khadr said that if this idol you're talking about does not show me that he is manifest here, then I will throw it away myself and I will take you away from all this devotion. So, he went away. Then after... Laruba and Jiuba prayed to the Takorji, to the idol of God, that please stay with us on this to prove that you are manifest as we see you. Ebel Khatr came back in a little time, a little cooled down, calmed down, and the bowl of milk that was in front of that Takorji, in front of Ebel Khatr's eyes, Takorji drank that milk, and that bowl flew into the feet of Ibal Khachar, kind of like Bhagwan himself was throwing that bowl after drinking it into the feet of Ibal Khachar, proving he is manifest in the Takorji idol. But what we want to look at is that we go to Mandir, we go to other temples, we see the idol of God even in our Gar Mandir or even in our wall. Yet, just we see the forms just as they do. We see the idol of God, they see the idol of God. We see Gunsha Maharaj here, they also see it. But there is such a tremendous difference because of their bhakti, because of their devotion, because of their affection towards God, that Bhagwan actually had to manifest there in front of Ibal Khatra and throw that bowl. After drinking it, emptying the bowl, had to throw it in the feet of Ibal Khatra, proving that Laruba and Jiuba's devotion was completely flawless. Another incident, Sriji Maharaj 
through a very big festival of Diwali in Gadpur and there is an Angkot Utsav there well not only Juba and Laruba but the other female devotees while they were making food suppose they were frying something while frying they can see the idol of God in that oil while they were making rotli they could see the idol of God there everywhere they could see the idol of God that's because their devotion was like that not only that but the services of saints is something that only one who is fortunate receives according to the Vachnamrut even in the Vachnamrut Gadara middle chapter 25th Vachnamrut Uka Kachar is named in that Vachnamrut saying that if one develops such kind of vesan or a such kind of addiction to serve God and his saints then all of his sins would be burned away and he could not even live without performing that service of saints in the same particular manner one time Laduba and Juba were in a carriage going now they were princes of a royal heritage so they were very rich so they were going along in their carriage and there must have been obviously a pathway and trees were nearby and there was a saint on the side they couldn't see him but he was making noises because he was ill and Laduba and Juba immediately said who is making these noises to the driver so the driver said there's a saint of Bhagwan Swami Narayan he went there and asked what the problem was to Swami his name was Akhanan Swami Akhanan Swami had a very bad illness in his stomach so he could not walk and he was bleeding tremendously he had a loss of blood so right there and then even if they were the princes of a royal heritage they even knew that you know at that time and even now saints cannot engage with women women cannot engage with saints and even in that time bhagwan was doing a prakaran or was had a small rule where his saints could not ride in any kind of vehicle like this or on a horse they had to walk and they had to stay outside of the village even in that time akhanan swami was sick laruba and juba stopped their carriage inquired of who they were who he was and then found out he was none other than akhanan swami the devout saint of bhagwan swami narayan so what they did was they got out of the carriage and they told the driver to take him into the carriage and take him to gadara to be treated with his illness and they walked along alongside the carriage this was their devotion towards saints and devotees so this only bhakti can do lastly i'm reminded of an incident you probably are wondering or you probably want to say where is that kirtan santos always sing when they are sit in a car and they sing this kirtan called madakiye chadiyare mohana vana maadi shobhe rudi karma lagam rupaadi madakiye chadiyare mohana vana maadi they sing this whole kirtan what is the reason for this is there a story behind the kirtan well yes there is and it pertains to these two female devotees laruba and juba well at one time Shri Ji Maharaj wanted to go to Vartal from Gadpur and obviously Laduba and Juba they could not live even one second without Bhagwan's viog or without Bhagwan's uh, you can say presence so Bhagwan wanted to go to Vartal to do an utso there with his devotees and saints but Bhagwan sat on his ghodi or his horse it was named Manaki and started to tread along the path to go to Vartal as he was Bhagwan was leading his horse trying to even encourage it to move along the horse could not move along further and Bhagwan all knowing Antaryami found out 
that Laruba and Jiuba had their vrutti or their vision tied in the horse, in Manki, stopping it from even moving further. This was their devotion. They could not even take even one second away from missing the presence of Bhagwan. So Bhagwan knew that this was none other than the works of Laruba and Jiuba. They were sitting in some far building uh, meditating and having their vrutti tied in Manki. So Bhagwan knew. So he, what he did was he sent his devotees to call them. So they came upon Maharaj with folded hands, like they were innocent, like they didn't do anything. And Maharaj knew everything, but he wanted to do or perform a divine incident, a lila, you can say. So Maharaj said, what are you doing? Ladubanju said, we're not doing anything. We just don't want you to leave uh, for Vartal. But Maharaj said, you know I'm coming back. Laruba and Juba said, we don't know when you're coming back. You're coming back. You may be coming back in five days, ten days, one month, six months, one year. Who knows? You might even come back in five years. But we want to stay here with you. We want you to stay here with us. We can't live without you for even one second. This was their bhakti. So, then Bhagwan agreed and said, I'll be back shortly. So, he did go to Vartal with his devotees and his uh, uh, saints but he had to cut the program short and come back immediately because of Laruba and Jiuba and seeing this whole incident Premanand Swami wrote this kirtan so this was the devotion of such kind of female devotees in the time of Bhagwan Swami Narayan now Again, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked in the beginning. If God were to grant you one wish and one wish only, what would you ask for? I bet you're going to think twice before asking for that $1 billion or that Lexus 430LX fully loaded with black tinted windows or the 7 Series BMW or even a mansion you're probably going to think about, I should ask for bhakti, because that's one thing that Bhagwan can't give me. So he'll be forced to find it somewhere in his bag and give it to me so I can perform his bhakti all his life. In short, the very purpose of this human life is to perform the bhakti of Bhagwan, meaning develop deep affection for Bhagwan such kind of deep affection that one cannot even live even one second without his idol, without his form, without his presence, without thinking about him, without thinking about his qualities. This is true devotion. And this is the very purpose of performing satsang. This is the very purpose of associating with saints. This is even the very purpose of surrendering your life to a satpurush so you can gain this attribute and you can obtain God. So saying this, when God comes in your dreams one day and asks you, what do you want? I want you to tell them, please give me your bhakti. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Nari. Varnivesharamaniya darsanam 
मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदन महम विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराजनी और माइटी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड भगवान स्वामी नारायण और बिलौट गुरु जी पूज्य भगत जी ऑल ऑफ यू डिटिस जय स्वामी नारायण फर्स्ट वन क्वेश्चन इफ यू आर गिवन अ ग्लास ऑफ वाटर एंड इफ यू यू आर से टू होल्ड द ग्लास then what you feel how much weight you feel in your hand twenty grams hundred grams one fifty grams you may say a hundred grams or one fifty grams but that is not possible because if you just hold for 5 minutes you cannot feel any more weight but if you are given a glass to hold it hold up it for 1 hour then you after 15 minutes you say oh my hand is aching right same thing happen in our spiritual world if we 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 are breaching or violating any commands of bhagwan then we feel some aching in our heart only for devotees not for the non devotees or non believers as a duty of bhagwan swami narayan whenever we knowingly or unknowingly violate any commands of bhagwan or his ekantik sat purush then we feel in our heart some pain and to reduce this pain just as to reduce the pain of our or aching of our hand we have to put down the glass same if we reduce or if we want to relieve from the pain which occur in our heart because of violating the codes or con, uh, codes and commands of bhagwan we have to be cautious about not uh, not violating again the same commands and not making the same mistake again but sometimes as a human being we have a three qualities remain in our heart in our mind sattva gun rajogun and tamogun when we have a qualities of tamogun we cannot think for whether the thing is right or wrong we cannot think for our words in such a situation when we have rajogun in our mind we can think only for pleasurable things what is pleasurable for my body my mind but not for my soul this is the qualities of rajogun only in satvagun we can find out we can think about things whether if i do this that is beneficial for my soul or not this is happen only in satvagun but whole the day we cannot remain in satvagun either one reason or another we can have these three qualities alternatively so now if we have tamagun and if we have committed or breaching any codes or hurt any duties or in any other way we have committed seen in the form of violating the bhagwan's command that is if we are a pure duty of bhagwan then it definitely causes some pain in our heart at the time of bhagwan swami narayan we know our bhagwan swami narayan has many saints at his time 
near about 2000 uh, 2000 or 3000 saints among the saints muktanand swami is the head or we can say the very and the most renowned saints but once upon a time bhagwan himself had ordered to muktanand swami and other sadhus and muktanand uh, bhagwan says to muktanand swami you take this group of saints and you should go to city of surat for spreading and preaching the satsang now there was satsang in surat because this is that was not first time saints were going in surat along with muktan and swami there were many other saints a group of saints near about 50 saints among them gunajitanand swami was also there as well as one uh, another saint whose name was santanand swami now the situation occur the muktanand swami wrote at that time his book uh, the title of that book is sati gita and uh the another thing is that the devotees of the surat they offered some jars of pickles for maharaj now the question is that for muktan and swami who can carry these jars as well as my book for maharaj from surat to gadda at the time there is no some more transport facilities and for that everybody have to walk but who can carry this jar and who can ready to go from surat to gadda because there is a vast distance among these both cities at the time gunatanand swami said swami if you please and if you give me your order i can uh, i am ready to give to gadda and uh, whatever you give me i definitely and very carefully all the things surrender to maharaj and we know in our sampraday a uh, saint cannot walk uh, alone in the way for a saint he had to uh, one companion in every time so as a companion muktanand swami asked in the assembly but santanand swami raised his hand and he said swami whether you said me to go to gadda or not but i want to go to gadda for darshan of maharaj so i am ready to go with gunajitanand swami so there was no chance for muktanand swami to decide whether santanand swami would go or not because santanand swami said whether you say yes or not but i have decided in my mind that i'll go to gadda with gunajitanand swami so now muktanand swami did not wish that santanand swami would go with gunajitanand swami to gadda but now anyway we know the nature of muktanand swami his politeness his kindness we know as his attitude for development and well wishing for others muktanand swami said okay as you wish for going for the darshan of maharaj you may go with gunajitanand swami now gunajitanand swami and santanand swami both the saints went to gadda from surat along the way gunajitanand swami had talked santanand swami more incidents of bhagwan swami narayan 
also he has glorified the immense glory of muktanand swami and other saints now when gunajitanand swami and santanand swami reach in gadda bhagwan swami narayan was sitting under a neem tree and in the assembly so bhagwan himself when bhagwan so gunajitanand swami and santanand swami both saints were coming from distance uh, bhagwan himself bhagwan himself uh, stand from his seat and he all uh, bhagwan himself go to meet gunajitanand swami now in the when bhagwan himself meet gunajitanand swami and ask him about the about news of how the satsang is going on in surat and uh, how our saints and muktanand swami and everything about this but bhagwan did not even see on the face of santanand swami santanand swami had performed done work but now maharaj sit down on his seat gunajitanand swami requested maharaj maharaj muktanand swami as well as other saints and devotees had sent message special for you that please maharaj embrace me in behalf of those saints and devotees now maharaj again stood from his seat and embrace bhagwan uh, gunajitanand swami 22 times and again sit down and santanand swami said maharaj i am uh, i am also with gunajitanand swami so please give me a chance to embrace me. then gunajitanand swami knew about the what he had committed a sin in in the form of breaching a commands of muktanand swami so gunajitanand swami said to maharaj maharaj yes santanand swami was also with me he had also carried these jars of pickles so please give your rajipo and give your pleasure and uh, give embrace to santanand swami also when gunajitanand swami said this maharaj not doubt to please gunajitanand swami bhagwan himself stood up and give embrace to santanand swami but when he sit down again bhagwan said oh i am tired bhagwan has no any harassment or no any tiredness uh, at the time when he embraced gunajitanand swami 22 times but when he embraced only one time to santanand swami he feel some tiredness why because santanand swami had breaching a uh, commands of bhagwan because bhagwan had said all the saints you should remain in the commands of muktanand swami and not coming here in garda even for my darshan so breaching these commands of bhagwan himself bhagwan was displeased upon that saints even though the saints has only desire to have a darshan of bhagwan so it, in this incident the incident says he the incident gave us the message that even for desiring or even for having a desire of bhagwan's darshan we should not or we should never violate any commands of bhagwan himself one side bhagwan's divine form another side bhagwan's words the words of bhagwan is also his form we should understand this this much glory of bhagwan's commands at the time when our mind said us to breaching a uh, bhagwan's command for the sake of good things in the form of even bhagwan's darshan 
so in this way whenever in your life any duty who feel pain in his in his heart we should quickly think in our own self our own behavior whether i have committed a bre- uh, whether i have committed any sins in the form of breaching a uh, bhagwan's command or making a mistake while verbal or physically or mentally in this way we should introspect on our own self and find out our faults and mistakes and then after according to bhagwan's word we have to say sorry to bhagwan and we have to do danwar to bhagwan as well as saints and be firm and determination determination should be kept in our mind and in our heart that we should never 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 make the same mistake again if we will not make the same mistake again bhagwan and the saints will be pleased upon us and they will give us his chastest pleasure blessings to us and only with these blessings we can run on the path of liberation because ultimate our goal is to have god realization the direct darshan of bhagwan himself for that reason we are trying to behold the form of bhagwan every day this is what our goal of this new year i have said earlier in my discourses on the after the diwali you are, uh, we know everybody every day except saturday and sunday everybody go to office for a job in the office everybody had to do the same thing every day but nobody become tired in the morning when they get the same job in another day in the same way this is our main job to try to behold the form of bhagwan in our heart if the people for earning money for his bread if people cannot become tired and with happily and with joy they perform their duty and jobs every day this is our main job why should we become lazy or tired we have to try without any harassment in our mind we have to try to behold the form of bhagwan every day because this is the only thing we have to do if we are not doing this thing then bhagwan will not be pleased upon us bhagwan say you have holding your hand with the full of with the glass full of water and now your hand is aching so what is my problem bhagwan said i have not say you to hold down uh, hold up this gla- hold up your hand with the full of uh, with the glass full of water so bhagwan say i am not saying you to do any other worldly activities forgetting my form i have only said you to keep my form forever in your heart whatever you do act action or activities in the day whether the activity related to satsang or your personal body but still bhagwan said in the vachanamrut 11th chapter of gras second bhagwan says a duty of god while thinking about the form of bhagwan and perform any activities that activity become a devotion because a duty has constant contemplation on the form of bhagwan while doing any activity so in this way we have to try behold the form of bhagwan in our heart while doing each and every activity now day by day gradually in our 
in our daily routine we add the another we add new activity meaning not a new activity of worldly or any physical but the activity which we are doing every day but with the contemplation of bhagwan's divine form or remembrance of bhagwan's form in this way if we try to behold the form of bhagwan every day definitely according to bhagwan's word bhagwan will be pleased upon us and he'll give us his divine glimpses not only in the dream but uh just as we are meeting each other face to face in person bhagwan one day himself give us his divine darshan by saying this जय स्वामीनारायण श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय श्रीपति श्रीधर सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधर्मात्मज वासुदेव हरि माधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे श्री घनश्याम महाराज जय